So let's just go uh, and take a look at the gold market. It's been fascinating to see that it's almost wiped out all of 2012's gains thus far. Uh, give us an indication of what's really driving this, because if you see from a political economic scenario, things are not looking that strong. We still have ultra low interest rates. The only big unknown is whether we would see more stimulus, not only from the Eurozone, but from the US as well. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of key things to focus in on at this point. So the uh, the main kind of headwinds for gold have been um, you know, Indian demand has been pretty depressed in recent weeks and months. So if you look in local currency terms, the uh, Indian price is actually close to record high. Although, of course, in dollar terms, we're down by about 15%. So some currency effects there are weighing on the Indian market. And the um, most recent festival in April, which was really key for demand, was quite uh, lackluster. And then from an investor perspective, we've seen kind of um, a kind of modest sell-off in the physical ETFs and some cutbacks in U.S. future positions as well. So uh, a couple of major headwinds there for gold at this point. Looking at platinum, it's still trading at a discount to gold, but that, of course, gap is starting to uh, narrow quite extensively. Daniel, would you say that we could w that we could actually see a number that uh, heads back to parity and platinum even overtaking gold down the line? Could that be a likely scenario? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I'd be more bullish on platinum at this point than I would be on gold. I mean, I think all the markets are being affected by this doom and gloom and kind of worries about the, uh, you know, the situation in Europe. But we've got to recognise that in markets like platinum and, uh, you know, other kind of other base metals, the downside is very limited by the high cost base. And uh, I think once sentiment starts to improve, we will see those kind of markets bouncing back quite strongly. So platinum in particular, I really don't see too much downside from here, maybe $50, $100 at worst. But um, I think we do see quite a lot of upside from here once that sentiment starts to turn around. So you know, the, the auto story, for example, is still quite good. Um, so Chinese car sales out this morning, for example, were up by uh, about 15% year on year, so accelerating from the previous month. So these kind of things will become more important once uh, confidence returns. Yeah. And this is why Palladium also looked far stronger today on the back of those car sales out of China. But what's interesting is that Palladium, of course, we've actually seen a very different scenario playing uh, out because uh, we saw those Russian stockpiles being tapped into. So that creating a lot more supply into the market. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, if you look in precious metals, actually, palladium has been one of the markets. It hasn't really gone down much from where we were a month ago. I mean, it's come off a bit in the last week, in the last few days, in the last week. But uh, it's held up pretty well in the scheme of things. And I think, as you say, that does reflect some uh, confidence around China, which is kind of one of the key uh, markets for demand. And uh, also interesting, we've seen some investors switching away from platinum into palladium in recent weeks. So the physical inflows into ETFs for palladium have actually been going up, whereas platinum has been going down. Yeah. So, you know, investors seem to be buying into that story as well at this point. Okay, so let's also touch on aluminium because aluminium is at the lowest level since uh, December last year. What is going to drive aluminium prices higher? Would you say that now that we're seeing these kind of levels coming through, would you say that they are far uh, more at fair value than what we've seen before? Yeah, I mean, there's two main things to look at for aluminium. I mean, firstly, the cost base is extremely high. So uh, we would say that at this point, around about 25% of producers are losing money. Um, the second thing is the demand side story for aluminium is actually pretty good. So, um, you know, I think it will be kind of around about 7% demand growth this year globally. So um, it's gaining market share at the expense of both copper and things like tin plate. Um, and, uh, you know, so from a structural perspective, things are pretty good for aluminium. We don't see much downside. And again, similar to platinum, once that sentiment comes back, I think you can see a fairly good uh, move upwards from here. Daniel, we saw copper falling below $8,000 a tonne, and that is sitting at around a three-week low. Can we expect more negativity for uh, copper? Again, this is the China story. This is the global growth story as well. Yeah, I mean, China's very much caught, caught, sorry, copper's very much caught in a tug of war at this point between London and China. So we've got a significant squeeze on the LME in London, but uh, continued worries about demand from China. So for now, you know, we've fallen below 8,000, but it hasn't decisively broken down. So it's still hanging in there at this point, And I think it's really important to watch for the next few weeks how that kind of pans out. 
I mean, my kind of best guess is that we will actually find some support around today's prices. And, um, you know, I think probably 60% that we go higher from here and 40% maybe we're going to go lower. But um, balance of risks, I think, still positive for copper. And we can't dismiss the fact that inventories are very low on the LME, so only about four days of stock remaining. So um, fundamentally, still a decent picture for copper, I think. Uh, Daniel, what is the likelihood of more stimulus into the market? And, you know, what kind of numbers are you pricing in, if any? at all and if you do see that happening uh, what is then the outlook for uh, the overall precious metal commodity space yeah I mean that's a good question I mean in terms of the kind of US outlook I mean things have been uh, kind of softening a little bit in recent weeks so obviously the employment data has been quite poor so that does kind of encourage the idea there might be you know a further program of QE from the US so certainly that will be very positive positive if it does come through for gold and uh, you know we see a lot of these central banks as well still buying gold pretty aggressively on these dips so you know we're not all doom and gloom on gold at this point although of course we can't ignore the kind of price action and uh, you know but I think it's a question of just looking out for those programs and um, you know I think ultimately it is still a good story for gold even though things might be a bit rocky for the next couple of weeks. Uh, also when you look at uh, the European scenario Daniel is this a very worrying factor and if we do see more stimulus it might just be very indicative of the fact that there is still quite uh, you know a worrying underpin globally so again uh, you look at you know the likes of uh, platinum versus palladium and copper so that they're, they're more linked to sort of the growth scenario relative to um, you know gold which is obviously more precious metal and you can throw a bit of platinum into that as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is people are, you know, our traders and the market is certainly very worried about the ongoing situation in Europe. So, you know, the kind of elections we saw over the weekend um, in you know, France and Greece certainly added to that uncertainty. And um, I think, you know, it, it, it remains quite logical for Greek, Greece to stay in the Eurozone, although, of course, with the uh, evolving political situation, nobody can be sure about that. So these kind of things are creating a lot of uncertainty in the market. Nobody knows what the end game will be be there and um, but I think probability wise those things will settle down eventually and uh, you know at the end of the day the global uh, backdrop is still slowly improving so both China and the US the PMI data has been um, you know reasonably good and um, so we have to kind of focus on that I think more than the ongoing problems in Europe where we're not entirely sure uh, where that will go over the next couple of weeks. Thanks so much for that Daniel great to of course speak with you as always.